Let's have a look around Python in Pieces. When you log into Python in Pieces or open Python in Pieces from Purple Mash, you'll get the main resources in the centre part of the screen here. On the left hand side you can jump straight in to developing a new free code project or you can access the microbit projects. On the right hand side you've got level 1, level 2 and level 3. Each level contains a series of six sessions and the solutions if you are a teacher. Any of the sessions can be launched straight away or set as a task if you're logged in as a teacher. They can also be shared to Google Classroom if you've got Google Classroom set up. Once you've set tasks, the task will be visible by accessing the tasks button at the top and any of the documents saved will be accessible via the documents area. If you're logged in as a teacher, you'll also be able to see data on your children and you can access the different lessons to see data for each one. Also at the top, there's a showcase of pre-made games and activities for inspiring children. They've all been rated and if you access one, you'll be able to access and view the code and run the activity as well. So let's take a look at some of the resources. We'll start at level one and lesson one. That seems like a good place to start. And uh, when you click on that, obviously you've got the launch or set task options. You've also got the option to reset that for the user logged in or reset that as a class if you're as a teacher. I'm going to, to launch this one. When you launch the lesson, you'll have an overview of the lesson, a short video here. And on the left hand side, you'll see the information about the lesson and the stages you're taken through. When you click to start the lesson, you're taken to the video in this case for stage one. There's a couple of tasks for stage one on the left hand side and when I click play here it will take me through how I can complete stage one. This is the first lesson, so it's likely that you've never seen Python in pieces before. I'll give you a little tour to start off. If you've done block coding in the past, you'll be familiar with blocks like this. And during the lessons, the number of categories of blocks here will increase and you'll see the blocks that are relevant to the lesson that you're doing. And to put blocks into your program, you just click on them or you can drag them. And blocks can click into other blocks. This block can click onto that block. The difference between other block coding programs that you might have used in the past and PIP is that this panel here shows the Python equivalent of the blocks. Python is a coding language that is text-based rather than block-based. During these lessons, you'll be learning how to write Python code. So I'm going to open that one now. Obviously, the children would watch the rest of the video. You've got the tasks ahead of you. I'm just going to close this one here and you'll see here that these blocks have already been added for me. It's saying print ABC, so I can put in here, hello world, and when I press enter there, you'll see that the text on the right hand side has changed as well. Now I can also add code to this side, so we'll do print and then we'll remember our speech marks, hello computer. There we go, and you'll see what's happened is the text uh, that I've added in here, the code that I've added in here, has appeared as a block over here on the left hand side. As the children work through, they can run. If they run their code, you see the code will run and display underneath that. And when they've finished, they can click on assess. It prompts them to do that. They can click on assess at the top and it will show them what they've completed. Sometimes there's a need to self assess, and that's pointed out here. I can tick that one, and then when the stage is complete, I can move on to the video for the next stage. As you move through the stages, you'll notice the children's knowledge and confidence in Python will increase and the challenges will get more complex. This one is the first lesson in stage two. It involves a countdown timer at the top there to make a rocket take off. So we've got to add the rocket in. We'll call our sprite here rocket. We've got to add some text onto our clock here at the top. If you want to go back and check your tasks, you can click on this button at the top here and it will bring them up. So done background, we've done the sprite, added the clock, we need minutes text and seconds text, so we need to call this one clock. And once we've finished the task on that stage, we can check using the task list, we can run our code, and then we can assess and move on to the next stage. Once the lessons have been started, the users will see a progress chart to the top right of each lesson in the menu screen. Using the free code and the microbit project is slightly different. If you access either of these and you start it, you're not set up with any particular stages or focus. You'll see you can access all of the different code blocks on the left hand side and you have no Python already written in for you on the right. You have the run button at the top, but you don't have assess because you're not assessing against a particular task. And you've got a toggle to the top right between code and design. You can click in the background and then start using the options to add on backgrounds and you'll see there's libraries in here. You can search libraries, if we scroll through. You can also upload your own images and take photographs here. 
choose backgrounds you can add on sprites as well so this one's been added on as a default python in pieces icon however if i click edit in the options on the left i can then browse the existing galleries but again i can also take a picture and upload uh, there when you add objects on when you add sprites on you can move them around and on the left hand side you can name them in a similar way to i did when i was using the task a minute ago Flipping back to the code, again, if I wanted to add a function, I could simply drag or click on the code piece there. When I've added elements, uh, you'll see here's my skater here, and I would like a movement here, so I'm going to do right. Click them in together, there we go, and I'm going to call this function right. So I define the right, the skater will go right. Now on the right hand side again, I can still write here, so I could do define left. And as you see, when I write code on the right hand side, it appears as code blocks on the left hand side. Now, if I run this code, okay, you'll see the functions have been defined. Now, I want to do is stop that one and I'm going to put in a mess event here. When I click on the skater, that's my uh, there, skater, we're going to execute the function right in this case, run, click on the skater, make it. It's likely that before the children develop programs in the FreeCode project and using the Microbit project, that they will have developed the confidence and the skills using some of these lesson resources on the right hand side. At the top there as well, don't forget you've got the showcase. So the showcase, when you open up these resources, they will open up in an edit mode. So the children, they also can edit the code blocks and edit the code on the right hand side of this, tweak the games and make them their own before running and playing them. And they can save their versions by going to the menu to the top left and saving. Once they've saved, they'll be able to access all of their saved documents using the Documents button at the top. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We're here to support you and we hope you really enjoy using Python in Pieces.